Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel. And in this video, we are going to go ahead and tear into this reel. But uh, I do owe you guys some specs. If you're already looking at this reel, then I'm pretty sure that you kind of know about this reel and the specs for it. But I'm going to go ahead and read them off anyways. So this Arise Air is one of four different models in the Arise line. And this particular one is coming with a 8.1 to 1 gear ratio. The reel is uh, purportedly a 135 gram all up weight. And we're going to go ahead and uh, measure that. And it comes in at 137.64. So that's perfectly fine. This is supposed to have a 5.2 gram spool weight. And we're going to measure that and I get a 5.72, so it's a little bit off, and that's because there's some grease on it. And then this comes with about five kilograms of drag strength. The Hybo rates this uh, reel to cast a lure weight range of about 0 0.6 grams to 10 grams. And I'm gonna actually test that. And then the frame of this reel is made out of carbon. Um, and I have actually gone ahead and done a scratch test on the inside of this side plate. You can see there, right here, I've gone ahead and scratched it and you can hear actually the fibers inside. Um, and I'm not really damaging the reel all that much. That part of the reel is not gonna be used. Okay, so the reel's claim to fame is the braking system in conjunction with this three position uh, inductor on the spool and the way that it interacts with the side plate is this in what i'm calling an inverse ftb system the uh the brake shoes are actually in the outermost position and as the spool starts to spin faster and faster the magnets are drawn inwards towards this inductor cup so this is the non-ferrous material that is causing or creating the uh eddy currents that then act on these magnets um, the eddy currents generate their own magnetic field and then act on the magnets in the brake shoes and then they cancel each other out and that's how you get your your brakes okay so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready to do the tear down and i'll be back in just a bit okay so let's get this reel open the first thing we're gonna have to do is take off the handle and that's by removing this Phillips screw right here to get to the handle locking cap. So hopefully this will come off. Screw stayed put in there, so that's fine. I have a left-handed reel, so I need to go righty-loosey in order to get that off. And then we're gonna get the handle off. Now I do wanna get a weight. So here's the drag star and it does have a clicking mechanism in two pieces and that's going to be this top piece if this ever falls off there is going to be something that you could potentially lose so be very mindful of this little metal piece in here it's basically a little kind of like a cone shaped metal piece and a spring underneath that and what that does is it rubs against these little indentations in this plate and causes that sound the clicking sound so there, you can hear it right there. All right, so I'm gonna put that side. I do wanna weigh the handle, just cause I'm curious. I, again, I'm not really the biggest fan of these handle knobs. Um, I don't like them to be too thin, but this is coming in 11.2 grams, so pretty, pretty lightweight. So I'm gonna set that aside. But the reason why I don't really like thin handles like this is because when you're, when you're going to retrieve, it just feels like you're searching for something. Okay, so next up you got a spring. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. And then this part is, this is the nut that seats that spring. So there is in kind of a recessed area in which the spring sits. And it's gonna be righty loosey because this one is a left-handed reel. And it'll be the opposite if you have a right-handed reel. So we're gonna put that down. This one has, it looks to be one spring washer and then a normal washer, flat washer underneath that. 
So in this case, the spring washer is not directional um, because usually there's two of them, but in this case, we only have one. Anyways, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and open up the reel, the side plate, and take out the spool and the brake system. And, you know, I'm not gonna take apart this brake system because I'm sure there are springs inside and I don't think that this side or this cover plate is gonna be too easy to get in there. But I do wanna take out this bearing because it looks a little bit unique to me. So there is a spring clip inside and I'm using my forceps to try to get one of the arms of the spring clip free of the recess. And that is in there pretty good. And then what makes it, wow, that is a, a very high tension spring clip. Go ahead and get my bearing removal tool. Whoa, and that is a really unique bearing. Oh, interesting. So what we have is a, what we have is a spacer with a bearing inside. So check this out. Here is the side plate bearing, and here is the spacer that it sits in. And this is a really interesting spacer because it has kind of a conical recess on the side that is open like this. So you can see how it kind of goes down in, and then on this side it's completely flat. So this side is the side that uh, goes towards the side plate itself and then the, the side that kind of comes in and is recessed and is kind of a conical shape is the side that faces the actual spool itself. And I think that's there like that to help you seat the side plate. Yeah, I don't really like that design. Okay, let me get you measurements on this, uh, this bearing. It's tiny. Um, so the outer diameter of this bearing is a six. The width of this bearing is 2.5. And then the inner diameter of this bearing is 2.75. So what an interesting size, six by 2.5 by 2.75. Yeah, what a, yeah, what an interesting, really odd kind of, um, size. I do want to see how well it spins because it feels like this is maybe not so well. Hmm. Yeah, you guys can obviously not see it spinning, but it doesn't spin for very long. So I'm not really sure. This looks like a standard stainless steel shielded bearing, but it's a very unique size. So I don't know if there are any, you know, ceramic bearings in this size, but uh, I'll have to search. And I, I do want to try sourcing a ceramic bearing for this. I don't know that Roro makes anything like that and uh, let alone anything that's gonna fit in uh, this unique adapter. So that's kind of one cool thing. I'm gonna put this spring clip back in. It's just gonna take a lot of time in this uh, teardown video, which I don't want to uh, take too much time. Okay, so we're gonna get back into the reel and set the side plate right there. All right, so we're gonna try to unscrew this side plate and it looks like there's one, two on the outer portion and then a third, a fourth, and then is there one in here? So four that are easily visible. There could potentially be a fifth down in there somewhere, but we'll see. So we're just gonna go ahead and start. And I'm gonna see if I can't size these actually. So I'll start from the back of the outermost portion. There's one. I don't imagine these are gonna be different sizes. And there's two. And uh, 
they do appear to be identical. So there's that. And then going to the bottom, another Phillips. And that looks also to be identical. And then the last one is near the clutch button and also a Phillips. And that one also looks identical as well. So I'm just gonna put those right there. And then we're gonna gently remove the side plate and it looks like there are no additional screws, so just four. All right. So now we are in the meat and potatoes, but before we get to this portion, I do wanna take a look at the side plate. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove this sleeve Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So a lot of reels actually, what they'll do is they'll friction fit this anti-reverse uh, clutch bearing. But in their case, they're actually using a screw to retain it. And that's something that a lot of uh, JDM brands actually do. And then you'll notice here in the spool tension bearing, that what they have is a, it's almost like a, um, a washer that has little tabs and those tabs the the washer itself is curved so those tabs will grip into the side of the frame and that's also something that you'll see in uh in japanese reels from my recollection i believe the tatula is very very similar to this i wonder if they make uh or are one of the factories that make the tatulas or salamanduras for Daiwa because a lot of the stuff that's in this reel is very similar. But uh, there's your spool tension shaft right there. And then there's uh, your handle bearing and your spool tension bearing. So yeah, pretty standard affair on this side of the reel. I'm gonna take off the spool tension knob just to check and see. Okay. So there's a spool tension shaft end and there. If you just push it from the back side, it'll pop out like that, but I'm not going to take it out all the way. I'm just going to leave it. This is also unique. It has, it, um, it looks like the, the threads are kind of recessed and protected by this little, I don't know, plastic sleeve of sorts. But anyways, we'll go ahead and reattach that. And so pretty standard side plate right there. And now I'm gonna put the uh, AR clutch bearing sleeve there. We'll go ahead and look at the rest of the reel. So here is kind of where the magic happens. So here's the main gear and it looks to be aluminum. And it looks like they've actually gone ahead and ported it, which is something very similar to what Shimano's doing. And then their drag clicker mechanism is slightly different from the uh, the ball and spring style that you see on a lot of BFS reels nowadays. Looks like they've got one Carbontex drag washer inside there and uh, nothing too special on this side. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that back in and we'll put the main gear aside. It is greased, not heavily, which is very, very nice to see. You don't need that much grease for these, just letting you know. Okay, next up, we're gonna take a look at the pinion and the clutch sleeve and the springs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the clutch springs there. And the pinion actually looks very well machined. You know, all the, uh, the cuts are very clean. I don't see any debris or anything like that. Yeah, so far the, the machining is actually quite good. Wow, they even include like a metal collar on this clutch sleeve. So that's very unique. I haven't actually seen that. I, even in uh, some JDM reels, I haven't seen that. And um, yeah, very, very interesting. Very cool to see that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And then the next part is to get This Carpentex drag washer out along with this anti-reverse plate. Well, this looks quite heavily greased. So I might take some time to kind of clean this up a bit. 
because I don't actually really need all that much grease. What ends up happening is if you over grease your reels, you know, usually on like a hot day, that grease will kind of liquefy and then find its way out of the reel onto your hands and then then you nobody's having fun. A little bit of grease is good. And um, if you want your reels to last a long time, you should really just, you know, tear them down every so often. You should clean them out, lubricate them and maintain them yourself. But yeah, so far I'm actually really quite surprised that, uh, you know, the machine machining is so well done. The parts are really well done. Another thing that I noticed is that on the main shaft, usually when I start tearing down a budget BFS reel, what I'll see is there's a lot of excess metal shavings and material on the threads. And on this one is actually quite clean. Maybe there's a little bit of, uh, you know, some stuff on there, but I don't see any metal shavings. And uh, when I was taking off this um, handle nut, I didn't feel any kind of grittiness or anything like that. Uh, the main gear, I didn't feel any grittiness coming out of that. Um, again, it's not the smoothest reel in the world, but it uh, it is a very smooth reel. So I would say that uh, this, out of all the reels that I've ever owned, the, the Daiwa Millionaire CTS V70 is probably the smoothest reel that I own, then followed by the 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS. And then surprisingly, the Solo King Acura is not too far behind the uh, Aldebaran. And then the Cas King VE2 is actually quite smooth. And then I would put this reel next to the VE2. So yeah, really well done reel. Uh, looks to be machined and built and put together very, very well. You know, when I, when I make these videos, I'm only talking about what I'm personally experiencing. There are going to be some bad eggs out there. Uh, even with the Soul King Acura, I, I, I can't talk highly enough or speak highly enough about that reel, but not every Acura is going to be, you know, a home run, smooth, out of the box reel. So there is going to be a couple that are going to be rough or have bad components. Uh, that's kind of the nature of the budget um, CDM world, I guess. But from what I see in this reel, I do think that it is worth so far, uh, not talking about performance, build quality, I would say that is definitely worth $115. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. The next one I will, uh, you know, get some test casting in and then I will come back with my final impressions and whether or not I think that this is the new budget BFS King. It's going to be a close, uh, a close call because my, my vote still goes to this reel. This is still hands down the best value for money that you can get right now until I see what this guy can do. And even then, you know, you can't really go wrong. This is under a hundred bucks. Uh, I've seen it on sale for as low as like $56, something like that. So for 56 bucks, you can get a reel that performs just as well as a 2022 Shimano Aldebaran is, I would say like 90% of the smoothness. Yeah, anyways, about the Hybo Arise Air, very well made, very well put together. And um, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.